your calls, we would like to talk a little bit more about these protests on Wall Street with someone who participated yesterday, along with many of his union brethren. Michael Mulgrew is the president of the United Federation of Teachers, better known as UFT. Mr. Mulgrew, it is a pleasure to see you. Uh, it's nice to hear from you. How are you, Liz? I am well, and all in one piece, we see. So we're glad of that, because apparently things got Thank you. a little bit ugly at the end. What was your experience of being there uh, at Foley Square? It was an amazing experience. Uh, we uh, started pushing this out. It was only a short notice out to all of our memberships, and uh, we were expecting 5,000 people. And uh, I mean, there was over 20,000 people showed up. We had the the four main uh, accesses into Foley Square it was just jammed up, and they couldn't even get in anymore. And the you could just felt the energy and uh, the passion, and uh, it was quite an amazing thing to see so, and be so part of. What does it mean to you, though? I mean, is this just a one-day venting? Everybody goes and sort of like yells into the void, and then, then then what? No, I, I don't believe so. I, I believe what you're seeing now is, uh, look, as a, a union leader, we've been out there for a while saying it, but it just it hasn't gained the traction. I think what you're seeing now is a culmination of uh, people have said austerity is the way to go. Cut, cut, cut. Well. You know, we've been cutting for years now, and you're seeing the human cost of those cuts. Hmm. And it's drilling down to uh, every, every piece of our communities. And you're seeing, you know, in the schools, which we deal with, um, you know, five years ago there were 22 kids in first grade. Now there's 32. Hmm. Uh, the services that our children need, all that's being cut. You're seeing that everywhere. And the Occupy Wall Street... You know, these are kids who went through college, people who had used to have good jobs, and that whole, you know, the things that we've always counted on as a country, if you do the right thing, if you go to school, if you go to work every day, then you're supposed to be all right. Well, that's not the case anymore. You know, you, and you, I think you, you're seeing that moving. You brought up this point. You said that you and other members of, I, I'm going to call them established unions, the labor movement, if okay. you will, have been really railing against this, uh, this cutting and, and the failure to tax the rich, et cetera, for a long time, and yep. you haven't gotten the traction. Why not? And are you a little embarrassed that it takes some kids, sort of a raggedy bunch of kids, sleeping in a park to get the media's attention? And I, 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 I don't know no. why that was. No, not at all. Uh, I think it's, you never know why something is going to catch. Right. And as I said before, I think it is really now that uh, the, these three years of just cutting everything has just penetrated so deeply into all aspects of life that people are just uh, have had it. And I've, you know, we've been a, a, a big believer that it can't just be labor unions by themselves. You have to be working with community. You know, the Strong Economy for All Coalition, which is a great coalition, it was formed here uh, in New York State just last year, has been able to push things in a different way and are starting to get traction on issues that we think are so important because it's not just about labor anymore. It's about the very fabric of our community well, that we know this is wrong. One might argue that the reason why it's not just about labor anymore is that labor as a movement isn't as strong as it once was maybe a, a number of years ago. You know, people can argue that, but to me the issue is this. The country is headed in the wrong direction. We're in New York State. We're the income disparity capital state of the entire country. You know, New York City, the income disparity capital of this state, hmm. when, uh, in terms of the top 1% earning 44% of the income, that's getting worse. And now what's going to happen is, say, in just in New York State, on December 31st, you're going to see the richest people of this state get a $5 billion tax break, which will mean more cuts and which will mean even a growing income disparity will get worse. Okay. And this is just frustration. Okay. So today there was a press conference here in Albany, and, and Governor Cuomo addressed this issue of the so-called millionaire's tax, which is actually, as you okay. just mentioned, sent to, set to sunset at the end of December. I know you haven't heard his comments directly, but you've heard what he said previously, and it pretty much hews to the same, to the whole same message, which is it's fine for the federal government because they have a different situation than ours, according to the governor. We are in competition with New Jersey and Connecticut and Massachusetts and Vermont and whoever's all around us, and we can't, we're already too high taxed and we can't afford to tax the people who create jobs. So what's your response to that? My response is that income disparity is bad for our state. 
and we have the worst income disparity in the entire country, as I said before. But they can go and, to Connecticut, my, right? And when, they can just go to uh, Connecticut. Well, you know, we have a, right now, we have a millionaire's tax that we have, a, that tax is on the books, and they have not left. Hmm. What we're talking about is not letting it sunset. So they have not left. So the argument that they're going to leave, I don't believe, is valid. And I, in talking to the governor, he, you know, he is greatly concerned about what is happening in uh, all of the communities. You know, in New York State, over the last three years, we've lost thirty thousand teachers. I mean, three thousand teachers. This is thirty thousand teachers. This is absurd. Besides all of the other things that are happening, and I know the governor cares a great deal about what's happening in each and every community. I mean, this Sunday, we're, uh, we're taking a busload of people up to Skullharie County, up uh, by Albany, to help insulate and sheetrock sheet rock houses that were destroyed in the hurricane. This is the stuff that people should be working on. And, you know, this is what I believe we have to keep moving on. And Wait, the just, governor can have... Go ahead. Just to be clear, how many teachers is it? Because now, now, I'm, now I'm confused. Forgive me. How many has the state oh, lost? It's uh, 30,000. Okay, I'm sorry. all right. Just to be clear. Over I, I, the last three years. Got it. Okay. So not, so not to, but just to go back for a second. I mean, you say this is what people should be doing. They should be working to help each other. They should be um, lending a mm -hmm. hand when necessary, et cetera. Instead, not instead, but they were also marching, and they were marching for this sort of amorphous cause. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I get calls from people and emails from people who are angry about this march and this movement because they feel like it's mm -hmm. a class war and they feel like it's ill-defined and maybe it's just as the New York Post has suggested, a bunch of kids who really should just go grow up and get a job, if there's well, one to be uh, had. Well, I would, uh, their message was pretty clear to me uh, when I was with them yesterday, that uh, the country's upside down, mm -hmm. and that um, the things that happened in 2008 where people weren't held accountable, but also the policies for the last 30 years where the middle class is completely being decimated in this country, that just doesn't work. So those, these kids, as they call them, should just grow up. They have grown up. They have gone to college. They cannot get a job which will allow them to live to pay off their loans. And it used to be in this country, when you did those things, when you went to school, you could get a job and you could raise a family. Well, those opportunities aren't there anymore. And as a teacher, it's not just about educating kids. It's also about fighting so that when they are educated, they have access and ability to have a good life. And we see those opportunities closing. So we're going to stand up and say, this is something has to change. And New York State, once again, income disparity is not a good thing. And it is growing so, to a very large point where it's going to cause more and more anger and frustration. So is this then going to be the Democrats' answer to the Tea Party? It, you know, people have asked me that question a lot over the last week. Yeah. And to me, it's just like... I'm not looking, uh, to me this is a social movement, it's not a political uh, movement, it's about pro-fairness for everyone, pro-having a strong country to move forward, pro-making sure that we have a future for our children so that they can live lives that we all hope for them to be able to live. And yeah, I know people are going to try to pigeonhole this or try to, you know, politicize what does this mean to the Democrats, what does this mean to the Republicans. I think what you're seeing is it's not just here in New York City where they're doing Occupy Wall Street. You're seeing across the state different actions starting to happen. You're seeing this starting to take root in cities across this country. Because what you're, the, the common theme here is the country's headed in the wrong direction. Okay. It's not working. Okay, before I let you go, what's next? What happens next? What happens next is we'll continue to work with uh, the different community groups through different coalitions throughout this entire state. I'm the, you know, I'm the union leader for the New York City teachers. Uh, we will go and help and people who want to continue on this work just speaking out that this country and we need different policies we need to make sure that one percent don't just continue to get richer while ninety nine percent start getting continue to get poorer and poorer and anyone who wants to work with us or anyone we can work with those are the people we're going to keep doing and that's where we're going to keep moving okay well obviously we're going to see more of you guys in albany because i don't think that the millionaires tax push is dead by a long shot no matter what the governor has said today and I know it's important to the speaker and obviously to labor unions like yourself. So we will see. In the meantime, I want to thank you, Mike Mulgrew, for being with us. It's always great to have you. 
If you're around Sunday, meet us in Skull Harry. We'll uh, get you a set of gloves, and you can uh, help out the people who have been hurt so badly. Uh, that you, you may just very well see me, and then you will be sorry. <laughs> no, I will not. <laughs> be well. Take care. Bye.